Well, hello. Welcome once again. Currency Recap. Joe with you here. It's August 29th. Let's get into a Thursday. I've got my two cents. You guys follow along and you guys know the drill. Take responsibility. I'm going to break down the meaningful news of the day. I'm going to take a look at these things technically, all the markets, and let's see if I can find some trades to share. Let's get into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70-80% to 80 of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. As we move into the market analysis, folks, you're going to see... Well, not a lot has changed. We actually got uh, a little bit of a move to risk on, which I was we were kind of surprised about. Let's take a look at the news of the day. Nvidia beat their numbers, uh, but the stock slid about six percent, just over six percent for the day. However, I would expect a little uh, if we were to see something like this in one of these heavy weighted tech stocks that uh, you, we would see uh, maybe a move to safety, and we didn't get that. Now it's too, it's early yet. It's just been one day. We will see where that goes. The U.S. expected to see a rate cut in September. That's kind of played itself out. I think that's kind of why we're seeing a lot of consolidation, at least in the U.S. markets and in a lot of these currencies. A lot of the currencies um, outside of the U.S. has actually had their own rate cuts and things like that. Uh, this will be the first the U.S. has done in quite some time. So where did that put us? We'll take a look at it. The yen, the franc, and the euro dropped. So kind of the safety currency slid a little bit. But uh, take a look at the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar. It's, it's basically risk off and being put back into risk on. U.S. dollar didn't really move anywhere. Uh, the pound and the CAD just kind of staying sideways. Um, although we do see a little bit of movement here, I'll, I'll show you in a second. It did change the velocity, but it didn't really change the overall opportunity for us to trade. Let's move into the equities. This is fun. I haven't seen the SPX close at 0.00%. Uh, I don't think ever. If I have it, I don't remember it. Anyways, it was down 0.22% of a point, right? So 0.00% kind of fun. Uh, so completely flat, which just says, hey, we're back up to the levels that we were at before the correction over the last month or so. And the markets are very complacent and just kind of sitting and waiting. Crypto, a little bit of a bounce there, shy of a percent, gold up, and then oil, another volatile move in oil. And we've seen that. I think a lot of it has to do with some overseas worries and it, it is getting back and forth. I've seen it down 3%, up 2%. It's up another 2% today. Uh, so it's just a little bit more volatile. Let's get over to the cryptos. Crypto's kind of flat considering how much they move, but Litcoin off the bottom, very strong at 2.56%. So where does that leave us? Nowhere. I'm just going to stick with our plus two outlook. We've got this nice high base, the consolidation. Rob talked about this yesterday. Uh, we're just back up to these levels. It's amazing to see how quickly this slipped and the expectations of a correction were there of course, but it was the response. This recovery right here just shows that sentiment, at least in the US equities, is super strong. People are willing to put money to work. People are willing to take risks and uh, very happy and complacent to put this all the way back up to where it started. So now that we're up there, it's basically just kind of, hey, we're going to end the summer. Let's see what happens with uh, the US Fed, if they're going to indeed cut rates like they, they're expected to, and uh, if the economy can kind of hold out and stay stronger. Who knows? But we're going to keep it at a plus two. It's just kind of sideways. Uh, there's no real reason to really second guess it. Uh, that's just kind of where we're at. Moving over into our economic reports, there's not a lot there. You know, Rob did talk about uh, the pre preliminary GDP Q over Q, which is increased, but this is actually revision. And you can see we're slightly in line with everything past that. There's not a lot to go off of. There really isn't any sort of event or any sort of stimulus out there. Uh, that I've seen this week or is coming in the next week or so going into a holiday, a large holiday here in the U.S. of Labor Day. So the Monday, the markets will be closed. Uh, as you can see, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of action uh, tomorrow. If so, it's not going to be very sustainable. So let's just move directly into our currency analysis. And I think what you're going to see is velocities have changed, but uh, really hasn't really created much opportunity at all. So let's just jump straight into the dollar. As you can see here, uh, the dollar just seemed to blip up a little bit and then go flat again. So as you can see, the dollar has gotten stronger, but it really hasn't cleared any sort of level that I'd be comfortable changing with. So we do have it above the kind of a flattening 
Moving average here. The star has absolutely flipped. We're flattening here on the SI, uh, but we're seeing a little bit of a strength here. I could actually give this a plus two or a plus one rating, but overall, folks, it's really not giving me anything to really uh, uh, compare it with. And, and what, what holds me up when it comes to how I score these things, folks, is the overall movement in the, in the longer term scenario, at least a couple of days. So even though we do have you know positive here, flat there and it may be kind of a sideways to upslope there that's fine yeah but it's just something that i'm not very interested in so let's just move on down the list here folks and the next is going to be the frank now the frank was something that i thought was going to break out and as you can see it almost did that yesterday rob was discussing this uh yesterday as a possible hey this could increase in strength but that didn't seem to pan out in fact folks you can see it was starting to slip before it actually fell down so a uh, pretty decent change in velocity. This actually went all the way uh, to a negative three almost pretty quickly. Uh, we could argue it as a negative two, uh, but where it correlates is you've got a, a pretty good fall here on the RSI associated with a flip in the SAR and take a look at this. I mean, we could almost give the uh, moving average a zero, but this tilt based on how far this is falling, negative three would make sense at least over the last little bit. Let's move over to the yen. Now, the yen really hasn't moved much. It's, it's kind of hung in there. You know, this is also a risk, on, risk off currency. But I'm really, it's difficult when these things start to consolidate. It's hard to, to read some of these uh, things sometimes when it comes to indications. Obviously, a negative one here. I'm going to go ahead and give that, uh, mm, I should say, maybe a zero negative one slope. But this zero here kind of, kind of negates that. Now, what I focus on a little bit more as well is this overall trend. So take a look at the channel this thing has been in in a little bit. So I would, I would lean this a little bit more to a zero personally, but based on our scoring system, it's a, it's a negative one. But it really doesn't really give us an opportunity to put it against anything strong or weak because there just isn't anything there. Let's go to the euro, another one that was showing some signs of weakness. And guess what? It's decided to stabilize today. Here is our flattening RSI. Now it is definitely lower, but it is flattening. So I really can't give that a score. Uh, a zero here for sure because the SARS flipped in a zero uh, or excuse me, a negative because the SARS flipped in a negative one as well uh, because of the slope here. So it's a strong uh, negative one, negative two. But since it's kind of consolidating here, I'd be OK if you guys gave it a negative one because it looks like it's kind of flattening out there. Once again, not giving us opportunity to correlate it against something else. Here's the pound. The pound looked like it was going to be super strong. In fact, I, I really was taking a look at this back in this area thinking that, hey, if we could just get a little bit of a slide to the upside, uh, that might show a little bit more strength. We've got our SAR, we've got a trend to the downside, and take a look at this RSI, it's a drop. It's sure it's flatlining here, but it is just on the weaker end of things. Um, basically, if it wasn't for the last little bit, this was also sloped lower. So this is a negative two, negative three. Moving over to the CAD. The CAD seems seemed to hold in there, kind of with, uh, well, not a lot did but really not giving us a score, even then very difficult. So we've been sideways as well. We've got a little bit of a slip to the downside. Is that enough to add a negative conduit? No, uh, here is a positive and look at this. It's absolutely sideways. So I've got sideways, sideways and one down, or excuse me, one to the positive. So the CAD is a plus one. Overall folks, we need to understand that we got to focus on the overall trends here. And this consolidation area just states that this really never had a chance for me to really get excited about it getting weaker or stronger, it's just meandering. So a plus one, a negative one, a zero, a plus one, a negative, it, it doesn't help me. It doesn't matter what it scored, it doesn't help us. So I'm just gonna leave that alone. Let's take a look at the Aussie. This has been strong, so is the uh, New Zealand dollar. This was looking really good. We have it at a plus two still. Anyways, breaking it down real quick, it looks like we have a, an RSI that's actually sloped up. It's kind of flat lining in the shorter term. I do like the slope of the moving average and above the SAR. So I'm gonna argue based on this area here that that could be a zero, so a plus two. Uh, but if you gave it a plus three, that's fine. If you want to trade it, you need to set levels. This is going to be an area to where you wanna see it break out. Now, once again, this is currency by itself. You wanna pair it with something weaker, uh, but we are early yet. And I just wanna echo what Rob said. There's just not a lot out there to get me excited. Let's move over to the uh, New Zealand dollar. As you can see, this one was a little bit difficult. I wanted to give it a plus three immediately, but where I got hung up was this flat line. I'd like to see an RSI come off of a pivot point up here showing strength. This, you know, this box right here would be more strength, um, but it looks like it hasn't pulled back yet. It's a little bit more topped out, 
tomato tomato folks you could score it as you will but i gave it a plus two now this sar just developed but you could see this was below but take a look at this moving average i'll take a bigger shot at it it's just very strong it's been very outperforming and the rsi being this high just shows that there's just no interest in selling it the momentum is still strong so i couldn't really beat it down even with a star that flipped so i'm going to keep it at a plus two for now Real quick, I'm gonna jump into the cryptos. Uh, not a lot going there. This is the overall crypto currency. It looks like it's in a nice bear rally and it could roll over. I actually like to see this. This is something that I wanna see on my bear watch. If I could get this to, to roll over a little bit, get this start to flip, I like where the RSI is headed. Now folks, this is just crypto in general, right? I got a nice pivot point. It's setting lower highs. Uh, if I can get this start to flip, I like where this trend line has been going. Uh, this might be a pretty good uh, entry to, to uh, take advantage of weakness, uh, maybe an entry somewhere at this level. Now, individually, they really haven't given us much. So first off, here is Bitcoin Cash. It's, it's flat across here. Uh, we got the star on the bottom, so it's, and this is sloping lower. Best I could do here is probably give it a plus one, and the only reason why I would is because of this star flip over. I do think it has a little bit more consolidation before it rolls over in the longer term. Uh, so let's make sure that it actually gets there before we go negative on it. Ethereum, I'm also going to leave this as uh, kind of a plus one because it's just in the middle of some oversold bounce. This is flat. This is the positive, but take a look at this moving average. There's no way I can score that positive. I can almost do that negative. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as a plus one based on scoring because it, to me, it seems like it's still in consolidation or it might continue uh, to retrace. Let's move over to Litcoin. Very similar situation. Looks like an oversold rally or a bear rally. Uh, we got the star flipped over here. This is sloping lower and that's flat. So I'm just going to go ahead and just keep Litcoin zero at this point. Overall, folks, there's really just not much that out there. I really don't want you to look too much into it, regardless of our scores might be off a little bit. But when currencies start to get inside the middle, and I'm not talking so much the velocity scores but when you take the velocity score changes back and forth versus where they're at on a daily chart it's very difficult to compare a few in fact i'll go out here and take a look at some possible possible trades with you guys this is kind of where we're sitting uh when it comes to the velocity score for the day so let's just go ahead and just try to uh, pair the strongest with the weakest right i'm going to go ahead and see what we can do with the pound and maybe one of these risk on trades uh, so let's take a look at the pound Aussie. And you can see it's almost a little bit overextended, at least for um, the uh, four hour chart. It's floated lower and it's consolidating. It looks like it's trying to uh, flatline here. It might even bounce. So right in this area, it's consolidating. If it rolls over and decides to break lower, that'd be fine. I don't know if it will. Um, it looks like it kind of slid on us. We had our opportunity earlier today, uh, but uh, we'll see if it can it, it, it can maybe have an oversold bounce or a bear rally but right now it's not giving us any sort of opportunity let's take a look at the pound kiwi because uh, it should be pretty similar well, this almost looks like a tradable pattern and folks i am seriously struggling when i say the word almost uh, we've got an rsi that shows that it might still be a little bit up or consolidating but take a look at the sar and the uh, the overall moving average so it's definitely rolling over here but i would not be comfortable until this actually broke levels I just want to see a little bit more conviction in any of the direction that I'm seeing in these currencies. Right now, they're just kind of squishing together, even with changes in vol uh, velocity. There's not a lot of opportunity. Like we said, if you can't find the opportunity, it's going to be short-lived and it's going to be pretty hard to catch. Uh, there's just really no reason to trade. So we're still seeing some cons consolidation uh, at, at the levels that we're currently at. And it's not just uh, the U.S. equities, it's its a lot of currencies. Everything's kind of finding this flatlining area. There's not a lot of push and pull or adversity. So not much out there to drive any market. Don't make mountains out of molehills because if there's something, we'll know when we see some divergence. And so far, we just don't have it, folks. Follow your plan. Uh, play relative strength and weakness. And folks, there is no relative strength and weakness out there for at least me to get behind. Proper position sizing as all if you try to trade anything. All right, folks, that's all I got for today. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.